Black college sports, and then some. We got it right here on HSRN, the network, the voice of HBCU sports. You are listening to Green Tail for Brown Folks with Ryan Marshall on HSRN. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to another episode of Green Talk for Brown Folks, GTBF. I'm your host, Ryan Marshall. We are once again so very excited that you have chosen to join us here on HSRN, the voice of choice. We're talking about uh, money ideas and concepts for people of color. And I am really excited to be talking about this particular um, conversation, talking about the great resignation. And we had the conversation in part one last week talking about it and why some people are resigning from their jobs, leaving what they're doing. um, And then some things that maybe you could do in this whole great resignation uh, piece. And so I'm really excited about this. I think one of the things that I I really want to continue having this conversation about are the the, the type of feelings that you may have with the current place of employment that you're at and and a lot of these people resigning um, and what it means. And I think a lot of people are holding on to their jobs as a means to an end. And maybe they don't like where they work because they have a boss that um, has them stuck in a dead end situation or doesn't appreciate them and their talents and services. Um, and so they just give them tasks that don't allow them to grow. They keep them in positions that don't allow them to grow. Um, maybe the, the, the environment is toxic. Maybe they're overworked and they're underpaid and they're not appreciated until in some cases, a lot of people threaten to leave or are literally about to leave. And so the combination of all of that um, has created this huge exodus of employees leaving particular jobs. And so now you're getting a lot of employers, a lot of companies that are having huge labor shortages um, that are really starting to have to rethink how they take care of their employees, what they're doing um, in redoubling their recruitment efforts. And uh, it really is quite a conundrum on on both sides of of the coin. I think last week we talked about there were some 4 million Americans, some 4 million people in the month of August alone that literally walked away and resigned um, from their employers, from their jobs. And I think that was the it was recorded by the U.S. Labor Department. And that was the most of of any month ever since they had been recording that statistic. And so um, and that that's very telling. I think a lot of people we we always talked about having financial stability to be able to do something like that. And a lot of people may not have the financial stability to just walk away from a job because, you know, maybe they haven't had or maybe their lifestyle was such that maybe they make great money, but they hadn't put enough of it away. And so they were like, well, I have to keep working this job in order to continue supporting this lifestyle or, you know, I have to put my kids through college or whatnot like that. But there are a lot of people now that are finding new opportunities and new ways to be able to support themselves financially or just walking away. Um, And they're just saying, you know what, I would rather have my peace. I would rather have my self-respect and walk away and find other ways to make money, such as a lot of people are becoming entrepreneurs themselves than to be in a situation where I'm physically uh, stressed, mentally, emotionally stressed. And now I've got to go to the doctor. Now I've got to go to um, a psychologist or a psychiatrist to speak to somebody, um, which is going to incur costs for me and is going to take time away from my family, my job and all these other things. And so people are starting to weigh the pluses and the minuses financially for walking away from their job in this great recession. And then you have those people, too, that are starting to reevaluate their lives during this pandemic. It's the the uh, the pandemic, one that many of us have not seen in our lifetimes ever. And people are wanting to have that work life balance back. People are wanting to have to be able to spend more time with their families, be able to be more appreciated. Um, And so uh, the pandemic has certainly accelerated that. I think the general trend was going 
in that direction where more people were looking for alternatives to having to work a nine to five or whatever schedule that you have for your employer. But now the pandemic has accelerated all of that. Um, And people are starting as well, I think, to say, you know what? I only have one life to live. Time is short. Things that I thought that I had time to do, I might not have time to do it. And if you think about um, the pandemic from a different perspective, has created the largest wealth transfer in the history of this great country, where we've had over 700,000 Americans pass away or die from COVID or any sort of COVID related issues. And so now people that have had assets or wealth or whatever that has transferred and shifted to other generations, heirs, kids, spouses. And I think beyond just that, I think people are starting to look at, you know what, there are things that I want to do in my life and I don't want to be pigeonholed at a job that I don't like that is a dead end job that um, really is not really doing anything for me. And so um, we're going to dive a little bit more into this great, uh, the, 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 the great resignation and uh, just some other things. We talked about the entrepreneurship tip um, and we may dive back into that as well, but I'm really excited to continue having this discussion and having this conversation. And so um, we're, we're going to jump to a break really quickly. Um, and then we're going to come right back and start talking a little bit more about the great resignation um, and then just dive in financially. Some of the things that you can do to protect yourself um, if you decide, hey, this is what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave my job. We talked about it more so from the entrepreneurial standpoint and some entrepreneurial things um, that you could do. But financially, what are some of the things that you could do to prepare yourself if that is the way that you want to be able to go? Um, We're going to talk about that and we're going to come back and we're going to dive right into that. And so um, I'm your host, Ryan Marshall. This is GTBF Green Talk for Brown Folks. We'll be right back. You are listening to Green Talk for Brown Folks with Ryan Marshall on HSRN. Welcome back, everybody, to Green Talk for Brown Folks, GTBF. I'm your host, Ryan Marshall. We are talking about the Great Recession Part 2. And last week, we, gosh, we got into uh, if you had to leave your job and if you were part of the the millions of Americans that have just, just walked away uh, from their employers and have said, you know what, I've had enough for whatever reason that you've walked away, we talked a lot about what a lot of people are doing in entrepreneurship. We want to talk to you a little bit more just about some of the 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 financial things that you can do to make it easier during that time. Because I think a lot of people, one of the ways, one of the reasons that they have held on to a job that maybe they didn't like or maybe they didn't want to be, be at or work at was because of their financial situation and their financial uh, status. And so um, their job being a means to an end, maybe they haven't saved enough uh, to be able to do what they need to do. And so uh, we're just going to talk a little bit more about some things, some short term things that you could do right now to make sure that if you have left, if you left your job or if you're thinking about leaving your employer, that you can continue to go as long as you can go. Um, if it if it took you having to be out of work for a number of months, three, six, nine months or, or longer, um, if you were going to become an entrepreneur, um, some financial things that you could do. So one of the things that, you know, if you're thinking about leaving and, and, and wanting to make sure that you have enough financial backing to be able to do that, um, I, I think one of the things we talk about is having enough emergency fund. And I, I cannot stress that enough, having enough liquid cash set aside for an emergency, you know, and leaving your job um, getting let go, furloughed, th- th- those are life events. That is a life event. And so um, that would be considered an emergency. You need to continue taking care of your family. And so the key is making sure that you have three to six months of emergency fund. And we're talking about if you have $5,000 of monthly expenses 
try to find a way to have at least at least three to six months. Some of you may already have fifteen to thirty thousand dollars, but for the vast majority of people um, out there thinking about walking away, they you might not have fifteen to thirty thousand dollars. But and I'll get to that in a second. But one of the things you want to do is be able to have enough liquid capital, so then that way you want to set yourself up the best to be able to to be able to leave and that's going to be a huge part of it because let's be honest bills aren't going to stop that mortgage or that rent is not going to stop that car note is not going to stop the kids uh education if you're paying for that daycare or whatever it is those things aren't going to stop and so you have to make sure that if that's what you are going to do is be part of this great resignation you have to have enough cash set in place There are a lot of people, and I cannot tell you how many people I've come across that they don't have that liquid cash in place. So what do they do? They go to where cash is available to them. And a lot of times that's a retirement plan or 401k, um, some form of if it's a 403b or 457 or whatever, if you're a government employee um, and those people take that money out of their retirement plan if they don't have the liquid cash, if they have it in their retirement plan. And so what happens is in a retirement plan, generally most retirement plans, most people are pre in in in, in qualified retirement plans. So that money is growing uh, tax deferred. It hasn't accumulated or hasn't uh, uh, gotten any tax. It hasn't been taxed. Um, and so that money's just growing tax deferred. So then when you take the money out to be able to use it for whatever everyday or monthly needs that you have, now all of a sudden you're incurring it. That's a taxable event because you're taking a, a distribution on your retirement. Plus in many cases you're before 59 and a half. And so now you're taking a penalty again, the IRS says that you cannot take you can if you want but it's not a it's not without penalty 59 years and 6 months is the time they deem that is retirement age and if you take money out of a vehicle set for specifically for retirement that money is going to be penalized 10% um plus then that money is going to be taxed as ordinary income so you take Twenty thousand dollars from your retirement plan, and you make fifty thousand dollars. It's like you made seventy grand because twenty twenty thousand of it is considered as is taxable income. Plus, on top of it, you're going to be taxed and penalized ten percent as well. And so that's why it's so very important to be able to find places and financial vehicles that one is going to be liquid for you to be able to take that money and be able to use it. And so having an emergency fund, and it could be in a set aside checking account or bank uh, or, or savings account or um, in a standalone um, account. But as long as it's in a place, but as long as it's in a place that is not commingling those funds, and so that's going to be very important to be able to, to to have the liquid cash. Okay, if you don't have as much cash backing. What we want to do is we want to be able to have you not have to dip into any sort of uh, taxable financial vehicles like that. Retirement savings comes to mind. So what we have to do now is try to find ways to lower the sea level. And that's going to be so very important. And so if your monthly expenses are 5000 try finding ways to get your monthly expenses to be 4500 or 4000 And so... The, the one of the, the the key goals is reducing your responsibilities, and there are ways that you can certainly do that. If that takes finding a way while you have the capital or while you have the uh, the income showing, maybe you go back and and try to refinance your house, um, and and that could be a way where if if you did something like that and you refinanced your house at a lower rate, um, then that could potentially shave some money off of your monthly expenses Um, or ways like not having to pay PMI. If you purchased a home and you put down less than 20% of your house um, as a down payment, the, the lender most likely required you to get PMI, which is private mortgage insurance, which is basically um, insuring against you defaulting on the loan. And it protects the company, the lender, not necessarily protects you. 
And so if you are below 80% loan to value and you have to make sure that your current lender is able to do this, um, they may be able to drop PMI, which is generally wrapped up in escrow and part made part of your mortgage payment. And so if you can do that and if you can have PMI dropped, that could save you maybe a hundred, two, three hundred you know dollars a month um, on your mortgage. That's another strategy that you can use. So refinancing your house could be one of those ways to be able to do that, trying to find ways to remove PMI if possible from your mortgage as well. And that could be a way we're talking about lowering the sea level if in fact, you want to be part of this great resignation and you've said you, you've made it up in your mind, I'm going to quit, I need to do this, then there are some things that you have to do financially to be able to put yourself in the best position once you do leave or if you've already left, then to continue sustaining doing what, what you need to do. Uh, finding other ways like reducing your expenses um, and, and reducing your lifestyle. And so... A lot of people don't like to do this. So you're driving a BMW or a Lexus or an Audi and your car note is $900 a month or 1000 or 1200 or whatever it is. And a lot of people aren't a lot of times don't amass the wealth that they want to amass and have the money set aside because of their lifestyle. Then I think it's something that you need to talk through with the people in your family, your spouse in particular. Do we really need that BMW where we're paying $950 a month on a monthly premium um, or a monthly car note? Can we look at reducing or maybe changing going from a BMW to maybe something else that's going to be um, it, it can still be a luxury car, but maybe just something that's less expensive and maybe reducing your more your your auto payment? And so if you can save two, three hundred dollars in your auto payment, what if I could find something that's six hundred dollars a month instead of nine hundred and fifty dollars a month? That would I'm sure would certainly help. Um, I, I drove a Jaguar for quite a while. I had the big body Jaguar, the XJ. I loved it. It was it was fantastic. But then there were some things that I wanted to be able to do financially for my family. And so I said, do I really need to have this big body Jaguar XJ long wheelbase, you know, and it just had everything that I wanted, you know, or could I do something else? And so what I did when I came out of that big body Jaguar, my, my objective was I wanted to find a way where I didn't have to have any monthly payments for a while. And I wanted to cut my monthly payments in half. I, I was paying about, I think, 550 bucks for uh, the big body Jag. And so I said, I want to be able to lower the sea level for me. So what I did was I, I went to a little credit union and I found where they had a special where if you financed with them um, on an auto loan, what they would do is they would give you no payments for the first 90 days and then you would have your payment um, at whatever rate at, at whatever term. And so I was able to refinance my auto loan that I had at a lower rate, not have any monthly payments for 90 days, and then cut my payment in half from 550 to well, almost half to 290 or 290 and some change. And so things like that, you definitely want to be able to try um, and do to lower the sea level. Uh, especially that's going to be one of the ways um, on that refinancing um, your house, looking at removing PMI. If that's something that you guys have, um, you definitely want to check with your lender because not everybody does that. And then also you want to uh, look at things like auto insurance, um, homeowners insurance, go out and once again, start looking at getting some different quotes for auto and homeowners insurance. It's going to be vitally important if you haven't done it in a while. And some people, I like my, you know, insurance agent and I like my agency, you know, you want to be able to give yourself as many options as possible. So if you find um, an insurance brokerage that may deal with 10, 20, 40 different insurance companies, um, then that that competition is going to be able to help you find the the lowest rate possible 
um, for that. So you definitely want to do a, a, a refresher of your auto insurance coverage, your homeowner's insurance coverage, things like that, that you could do right away immediately if you're going to make this great resignation jump and this leap. Coming up in segment three, we're going to continue the conversation about some things that you can do financially if you're going to make that leap. Um, away from your employer, either into entrepreneurship, or if you just wanted to take a mental break for a while and and sit at home and just spend more time with your family. Um, And we're just going to continue to dive into that. So this is Green Talk for Brown Folks. We're going into segment number three. I'm your host, Ryan Marshall. We'll be right back. You are listening to Green Talk for Brown Folks with Ryan Marshall on HSRN. Welcome back, everybody, to Green Talk for Brown Folks, GTBF. It's your host, Ryan Marshall. We're talking about the Great Resignation Part 2, and we're talking about it. We started diving into some ways financially that you can prepare yourself if you are going to be part of this Great Resignation. And you're thinking about walking away from your job. We, In the first part, we talked about just some of the reasons why people have done it and some of the things that they're doing once they leave, and a lot of people are going to entrepreneurship, especially in the black and brown community and and with African-Americans, they lead the new entrepreneurship charge of going out there and trying to create opportunities for themselves. But in the meantime, part two, talking about some of the financial things that you can do right now today to make sure that while you're thinking about making that transition or going or you've already made the transition now that you can do to make sure that you are still financially stable, financially solvent, and that you are taking care of your responsibilities. And that's so very important. And we've talked about a couple of things already. We've talked about lowering the C level by reducing your um, monthly expenditures and a couple of strategies and ways that you can do that. Uh, Trying to have adequate cash amount in your um, emergency fund, having at least three to six months of your monthly expenditures. So then that way, if you have to make that move, then you can go on ahead and make that move without having to feel like, okay, well, how am I going to be able to do this? And so if you have $5,000 of monthly expenses, then you should have fifteen to $30,000 set aside um, in an emergency fund, because let's be honest, if you're not bringing in any capital and you're looking for another employment opportunity, those bills aren't going to stop. And so that money has to come from somewhere. And so hopefully let's let that m- amount of money come from a liquid situation cash that you have on hand, as opposed to if it has to come from a 401k um, or something of, na- of that nature. Now, look, if if you have to pull it out of your 401k, then it just is what it is. And, you know, you you got to continue to eat. You got to continue to take care of your family. But I mean, obviously, the point is trying to give you ways where you don't have to do that because saving for your retirement is so very important. And that's why um, we're, we're talking about this. Um, finding ways to get financial education and financial literacy. It's so very important, especially in the black and brown community and being financially literate or finding places. We're in the information age and, and, and not being financially literate, not being finding out information in the information age is really no excuse anymore. I mean, we have to be able to find places and companies to be able to to do things. So I think One of the things that you definitely want to do, along with getting a financial education, find companies that are going to be able to teach you not just about, you know, the stock market and growing wealth and things like that, but right now trying to set a budget. And I think that's going to be another key thing that we're doing. But finding companies that are going to teach you about lowering the sea level or having an emergency fund or maybe refinancing a home or uh, taking PMI Um, Going back to your lender to see if they can have PMI removed, if that has been placed in an escrow um, situation. But setting and creating a budget and sticking to your budget is going to be so very important as well. You know, especially in a situation when maybe you're not at work or maybe you're an entrepreneur and you're trying to get everything rolling the way that you want it to roll, you have to be able to stick, create a budget and stick to a budget. And that's so very important to be able to do that. And so, um, you know, we, 
<laughs> my wife and I used to always talk about her family used to do this cash envelope budget, um, the cash en envelope method of, of creating a budget where they used to sit and they used to put a certain amount of cash in an envelope. And this was going to be a budget for this. And it's going to be for this and for this and another envelope for this. And once all of the money is gone out of that envelope, then it is gone. You cannot spend anywhere else. And I think that's going to be so very important for certain people to be able to do is not overspend, you know, not swipe that credit card, say, okay, you know what? I've got a hundred dollars that I'm going to spend right now outside, um, just on extraneous things. You know, if I'm out, um, eating out or anything like that, because what will end up happening is, You'll just get to swiping. You know what? I got 30 days. I can live off my credit card and I'll be fine. But what ends up happening is the money that you think you're going to spend, you end up always spending more money. You intend to go and spend 10 or 20 bucks and you swipe a credit card for 45 or $50 and you look up and you get this bill like, whoa, $1,300. I don't have $1,300 to pay. And then all of a sudden now you're rolling balances over at 20 and 25 and 30%. Um, interest in some cases with these credit cards. And so you always want to be able to try to set a budget. And that's going to be so very important to be able to do um, in that regard. And so we, we haven't really given you everything, but we've given you, I think I have given you enough to where if you're going to, in fact, make this big leap and this big jump, then you can do that comfortably and successfully. Um, always find a company to get some financial literacy, to learn about some things that you could do on how to better protect your family, how to grow some wealth, how to um, do the short term things uh, to make sure that your day to day is good and you stay financially solvent. But then also find a financial professional to help guide you. I think that is the final point that I'll, I'll make is that too many people try to do this on their own. Find a financial professional that you could trust that's going to work with you to come up with a plan of action to help you get through this situation because it's going to be so very important, especially if you're considering walking away and leaving your job. Get a financial professional to work with you. That's so, so, so very important. Um, obviously, we're going to be here um, and I'm so excited to continue talking with you. We're going to switch gears a little bit again next week. And so uh, thanks for joining me on Green Talk for Brown Folks. I'm your host, Ryan Marshall. Um, until next Friday at 1 p.m., join us and we'll talk to you then. Thanks for listening to Green Talk for Brown Folks with Ryan Marshall on HSRN. Follow Ryan's social media on Twitter at Ryan H. Marshall and on Instagram, RHM Wealthwave. You can also connect with him via email at ryan.marshall at howmoneyworks.com. That's ryan.marshall at howmoneyworks.com. Join him next Friday at 1 p.m. for another edition of Green Talk for Brown Folks.